Yeah, g'day, Mark here, and welcome back to my channel. Now last week I did a midweek video just to ask for some help, because I'd done something a bit weird in the setup of my VFD, and I needed somebody to troubleshoot what I did and how to undo it. So what was the problem? Well, the simple answer is, I did on myself the oldest joke in aviation. You know the one where the pilot comes in and writes up, IFF is not working in the OFF mode, and the mechanic goes out and clears the logbook with tested the ON, AUTO, STBY, and OFF modes all working normally. Well, I promise I won't disturb the space time continuum too often with these midweek video uploads, but because I got so much constructive and helpful feedback last week, I thought it'd be a good idea to quickly give you some feedback. So what was the issue and what is the solution? Just to summarize the problem, when I first installed my VFD, I didn't have a brake resistor on it, and therefore I couldn't use the VFD to decelerate the lathe spindle because the additional electricity generated by the motor in generator mode couldn't get dumped. So the VFD would bounce back and forth between an overcurrent and normal during deceleration. Back when I installed the VFD and worked out that I had a problem, I had somehow put the VFD into a coast down mode where it didn't try to decelerate. So fast forward to today, I bought the brake resistor module, I installed it, and it still didn't seem to work. So when I turned off the spindle, it still coasted down and took forever. Now the more complicated response is a little more nuanced than that. Pretty much all VFDs, when they first receive power, will only power like the brain of the module. And you need an, a separate enable for it to turn on and off the power stage to then be able to power a motor. When I set up my lathe, I thought that I had the enable connected to machine start, machine shutdown, and e-stop. But that's not actually the way I did it. What I actually did was put a contactor in front of the VFD so that when I first turn the machine on, some things get powered up, but the VFD doesn't. That's activated when I release the machine from e-stop. So with machine on, contactor closes, and that powers up the brain of the VFD. And as I currently have it connected, when I do an e-stop, I drop that relay. Now there are definitely arguments to be made that it would be safer to take advantage of the braking of the VFD on an e-stop and not just electrically disconnect the VFD immediately. But at the moment, that's the way I've got it set up. It would be easy enough for me to change that behavior with Linux CNC. Let me just home it so I can use the MDI. Now this is a pretty simple and primitive VFD. You've got three phase 400 volts coming in here at the bottom, the motor three phase coming out down this wire. This thing's just a filter, as is this over here. Input filter, some sort of output filter. Up here in the control section, we have got these two wires here, the green and white pair, are the actual speed command, and that's being controlled by the Mesa 7i83 analog output card. That's this output here. So we're giving analog speed command to the VFD, 0 to 10 volts, providing the speed range. Now the next pair of wires here are an output signal. It's basically just a relay inside the, the VFD, and I'm using that to monitor whether the VFD is running or not. On, over on this side, I've got three more pins connected. That one there is just a ground. Pin E4 just reverses direction. And then up here, I've got number 28, this blue wire, and that is the drive enable pin. So back when I was setting up the VFD, because I didn't know how to deal with the braking and it going into overcurrent, so I was using this as spindle on off instead of enable. My bad. And a bunch of you worked out immediately that that was my problem because the display goes to off as soon as I stop the spindle. Let me show you. As you can see, as soon as I hit the off button, it just disconnects the power stage and lets the motor coast down. I thought I was setting a coast down mode. Actually, all I was doing was disconnecting the power stage. S50. My scaling 
that's a different issue. So don't worry about the speeds, actual speed numbers. But I start the spindle at a whatever 50. Spindle's turning very slowly. Let's go up to spindle 500. And you can see when I come back down from 500 to 50, the brake's working. Now playing around with the braking ramp, which is C13, you can see I've currently got it set to, tr to break down from maximum speed to nothing in a half a second. What happens if I hit it S0? It goes off. If I command spindle speed 1, the motor actually stopped, but it's still being powered. So if I now go to M4, so I turn it off and now it goes off. Now if you remember I had two issues. One was the tool has retracted after the first path, infed and is probably nearly a halfway through its second pass before the spindle has decelerated enough that it needs to start accelerating again. As it is, the brake already sorts out that problem. And the second issue was the spindle coasting down from whatever speed you switched it off at. To deal with the second problem, I've got kind of three options I can think of. Option one is do nothing. Just accept how it is. It works fine for constant surface speed, and whenever I shut down the spindle, I just have to wait for it to run down. Option two is a software fix. Go into Linux CNC, probably using the classic ladder, react to a stop command by first commanding speed one hertz for a second or two while the, while the spindle gets braked, gets broken down. And then after the delay, disable the output to that enable pin. And the third option would be hardware, putting some sort of a 24 volt brake signal onto pin E3 of the VFD and making it brake properly. Now while my natural laziness would tend to option one, let's take a look at option two first. Now IO is being done off this card here. It's a Mesa 7i84. And the problem I have is that each bank has eight outputs and 16 inputs. 16 outputs should be enough for this machine. But unfortunately, you have to apply a certain field power to each of these banks. Because I've got five volt hall sensors for my home position sensors and also for the tool changer, I've had to put this bank onto five volt. So therefore I also only get five volt outputs out of it. This second bank is on 24 volts, but unfortunately it leaves me only eight 24 volt outputs and that was not enough. By taking a six axis card and using a couple of axis enables that are otherwise unused, they gave me a couple of extra 24 volt outputs. Once those ran out as well, I ended up using my five volt outputs to trigger relays to then switch 24 volts, but I've run out of them as well. So to get more 24 volt outputs, I've really got two options. Now to add more outputs, I could just add more relays. This, for example, is an eight relay board, which I use for my watering system for my house, but unfortunately I've already killed three of the relays on it. Wouldn't really help to add that in there. Plus I'm, I'm really not that convinced at the quality of those relay boards. So the better option would be to simply add a second 7i84 and I even have one but unfortunately I blew this one up. What I'm going to do is send this to Tala83. Peter is simply the best Mesa card Linux CNC YouTuber out there. All of his videos are in German but with modern AI translation and stuff if you have any issues with this this hardware or setting it up I really recommend you go and try out his websites. These boards connect through smart serial interface and I've got an expansion card here, the 7i85. On the one hand, this reads out encoders for me and on the other hand, it, it connects up and interfaces both of the servo card, the I.O. card and also the card up in the control module which does all of my keyboard interface and stuff. So I've currently got three are connected but I've still got two more of these channels available to me to add another 
7i84. So on Monday, this is going to go out on the post to Peter. As far as I know, I've fried this pretty thoroughly, so he may not be able to repair it, but let's give it a go. So in the, before I get that card back, I'll just go ahead with option number one. I've broken my HAL file, which is like the whole configuration file for Linux CNC. I've broken it into a bunch of different parts. So in this case, I'm in my spindle HAL. And at the moment, this pin associated with Linux CNC, spindle zero on, connects to a signal, spindle enable, and that signal sends it out to this Mesa card. We're there, it connects to the VFD and enables or dis disables the VFD. And all I've done is inserted a link into class Classic Ladder and then a link back out. So you can see where that signal comes in and where it goes back out again. I'm not doing anything with it. Classic Ladder is currently not altering it in any way. So if I start the spindle, and stop the spindle, it's still as before. So what I've done here is just added a timer off of two seconds to keep the VFD awake for two seconds after I turn the thing off. So now when I turn on, it goes on immediately. When I turn off, it keeps activated for two seconds before disabling the VFD. The second thing I need to break into is going to need to be the spindle speed command. Oh, now wait a minute, I'm already netting that value to both the output card and to classic ladder. This is used as an inhibit to not release the tailstock if the spindle's on, or not release collar if the spindle's on. Now what I've also added here is a branch so that I get VFD voltage commanded is equal to spindle voltage commanded. Basically, out equals in. And that now works. With the two second delay. There are two issues here. One is that where I'm losing my decimal voltage. Okay, now at this point, I've kind of reached the limits of option two, a software solution, because I can't work out how to get classic ladder, even though it's a state machine and runs a thousand times a second, I still can't get it to react in real time to changes in the spindle speed. It does read the spindle speed when I push a button, but I want it to con constantly react to it. So. Let's put option two, the software solution on ice, and try option three, and just throw a relay at it. All right, now this is just a temporary bodge job that I'm gonna do until my 7i84 returns. Now that I've got that extra relay wired up, I've returned to my original spindle hell, getting rid of the stuff that I was doing with Classic Ladder before. And so what I've now added is there's a standard output from Linux CNC called spindle break. I've connected that with a signal to output number four of the Mesa card and wired that into my VFD. So here I'm in the, the HAL show. I'm just looking at that spindle VFD break connects to output four. So what happens when I start the spindle? So you can see when I start the spindle the break goes off. When I stop the spindle the break goes back on. But I've still got the issue that the VFD is being disabled. To keep the VFD enabled for a couple of seconds and let the brake do its job, I've taken that spindle signal and sent it through Classic Ladder so I can massage it, in this case put a delay on it, before it gets output to the VFD. So if I try that... Oh, that's good. So I do get a slight run on at the end, but otherwise it's working great. If I start it up.
All right. Now I got the expected comments that I probably shouldn't put the brake resistor here inside the control cabinet because it's going to generate a lot of heat. But actually, it's generated almost none. I'm guessing there's a two or three degree temperature rise, maybe five max. So I don't have any concern about that. Can get removed. Pretty happy about that. Now I'm really happy that I've got that brake working. It's another thing that's been hanging around on my list for way too long. And with that, thank you very much for your help. And don't forget to stick around because the next video the algorithm thinks is just right for you is going to come up here. Till next time, thanks a lot.